Now, just get this straight. If they select based on merit, that's going to be a problem for the Royal Air Force because they have targets they need to achieve. More officers in the service should honestly think about challenging this. I don't know why I'm doing this work for you guys. I'm not even in the service right now. It's embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, welcome back to Fast Ship Performance there. My name is Tim Davies, and today we're back in the attack shack dropping a really big truth bomb, okay? I wanna get straight into it. I wanna minimize the time we take doing this video because this is so abhorrent that this is being done. I don't know where to start. Let's go straight to Twitter. What we're dealing with here, guys, is an, well, it's not an, an apology at all. It's uh, more of a denial by the Chief of Air Staff, Mike Wigson, who was my boss on this aircraft, Tornado GR4, when I was in the Royal Air Force 15 years. I was in the Royal Navy for five years after that. Um, as uh, the senior flying instructor on largest squadron in Northern Europe, probably at the time on the Hawk T2 here. And Mike was my boss here. And so I know him quite well. He's a good dude. I really like him actually. On a squadron, he's a great guy. As chief of air staff, maybe not so much. That's what we've got to talk about. What happened then was a lot of people put out some, a lot of papers put out some things about how the Royal Air Force was discriminating against white men coming into the service. And it was recruiting what it called BAME and women over them, even though they hadn't got as as high scores. It was just not recruiting the white guys. A load of white guys write, wrote to me and I've got, I, you know, I mentor these young guys and I mentor ethnic minorities. I've got a Nigerian guy right, um, I'm mentoring at the moment. So all trying to get into the service and women as well, of course. And they wrote to me saying, I don't know what's happening, Tim. I've got scores around about the 140 and the aptitude tests. I'm doing really well. I've done really well in the interviews. And they keep delaying my Cranwell score. And I've just aged out of the Air Force. I think if you're not entering the Air Force by, I think, 23 or something to be in by 24, you age out. And of course, I always tell people, apply to the Navy as well, or the Army as well. Have dual applications in. You can do that. It's fine. The Royal Air Force said then when it was kind of caught doing this, Chief Air Staff, Mike Wixon here, he wrote this on the Royal Air Force's um, Twitter feed here. I set the Royal Air Force ambitious and stretching targets to ensure our service attracts people from across the widest pool of talent in the UK workforce. I stand by the ambition for greater diversity. Why? With the support of my leadership team and ministers. He's trying to make the Air Force representative of the uh, population, which is ridiculous, of course. It's like the Roman centurions going off to conquer um, Germania and everything else with half women. It's, it doesn't make sense. The police force, yes, because it pleases by consent. The military, no, just give me the fiercest, best people you can, please. That's what I want. We're determined to recruit for a Royal Air Force in ways that are fair. That's a lie. I don't discriminate against anyone. That's another lie. I maintain our high standards. Earlier this year, we explored a recruiting practice to improve the diversity of our workforce. This policy was challenged and never implemented, but I regret that challenge led to a head of recruiting and selection stepping down from her role. That may be true. The one I'm talking about was the back end of 2020 into 2021. Most of the applications from young white men that didn't get in were in that period mid 2020 all the way through to the back end of 2021 so whatever's happened earlier this year could be a different policy but i'm going to show you the policy that was in place at the time and why mike's actually not telling the truth here okay a non-statutory inquiry has been launched to understand the circumstances that led to her decision this is group captain nicole a woman with red blood in her veins a commissioned officer commissioned by her majesty the queen serving under uh, his majesty the king god save the king and uh, obviously she has that red blood in her vein and she has integrity in her heart. And that's why she stepped down because she was doing the right thing. OK, and more officers in the service should honestly think about challenging this. I don't know why I'm doing this work for you guys. I'm not even in the service right now. It's embarrassing. Write to Kaz. Tell him that you're very worried about what he's doing. He's not going to sack you for crying out loud. Just write to him. Just control K, Wigston, Wigston, control K. You'll get there. You'll get there. If you all start writing to him saying we are concerned about the reputation of the service that you're leading us because Tim's making bloody videos about us, mate, and we look like a dick lord. So there's an inquiry going on, but a lot of material I'm hearing is not getting to them. It's being stopped by the senior leadership team, which is Chief Air Staff Mike Wigston, it is Air Vice Marshal Maria Byford, and it is probably Air Commodore Lincoln. And although she's just taking direction from them, then it's going down to group captain. There's a new group captain in now because Nicole stepped down, new one was appointed a couple of days ago. Uh, so they need to see it. And But they want, they're going to be interested in what you're going to see in a minute. Explosive. Explosive, okay? So basically, we continue to recruit people based on merit, which is a lie. More diverse Royal Air Force will be stronger. No proof. More effective. No proof. Innovative and resilient. No proof. And better able to face the threats and challenges of the future. But there's no proof of that. Aspects of it, yes, may well be true. But diversity is not a strength. Go and look at Leicester, what's happening up there at the moment in the United Kingdom, if you want to see diversity in action. Okay, so that's the thing, isn't it? That's the problem we've got. Let's go through this email then. This is, and I will warn you about this, guys, because I, in the comments then, I get veterans, I mean, writing to me, I get serving personnel, personnel that have left now, senior personnel that have left phoning me up and talking about this. Great damage is being done to the reputation of the Royal Air Force by Mike Wigson. And I, I hate to say that I'm going up against Mike, 
because I don't want to do that, but I don't know how else to. He's the commander. The Air Force is not his. The Air Force is yours. It's the people of Great Britain, and it is obviously the people serving in the Air Force. He just happens to be the figurehead, and probably not for much longer, if I get my way. There's a paragraph that is commented on in the first line, and what the Air Force is trying to do here, this is from the Air Force recruitment selection up in the corporate governance team, was to say, hey, recruitment and selection, maybe these people that aren't getting in, but do have really good scores, um, how do we tell them that they didn't get in? Because they're asking us, they're you know probably young white men, strange enough, saying, but I've got really good scores and didn't get in. What this person said is, well, something the Royal Navy are looking at on the scoreboard clause, which means if you get a really good score, we don't get in, they, they've got a clause. Well, if you get a really good score, they still don't have to select you, basically. They can still say, no, you've got a good score, but maybe your skin color's white, like this guy here, and maybe you're male, like this guy here, and therefore you can't get in. Because we're only gonna recruit BAME and women. That was their terms, not mine. Royal Navy, they turn, they have a feature which um, is called blind allocation. They can't see the sex and they can't see the race of the person joining. The Royal Air Force turned that off, or I think it didn't turn it on, more, more importantly, because the system was written by the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force for selection. Uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. And so it can see and therefore it can select. And the way they're doing it is quite clever, but still illegal. And I'll talk to you about why that is. The Royal Navy Recruitment uses a psychometric test in the early stages of recruitment called the Digital Recruitment Test. This, along with your initial selection interview score, Educational qualifications and performance in the pre-joining fitness test informs decisions made on who to invite to later stages based on scoring and sifting processes. In addition, test scores and other applicant data are regularly captured for statistical research analysis purposes. Your scores are calculated from the responses you give during the digital recruitment test, interviews, educational results. No other information about you is used. This is from the Royal Navy, by the way, which is not true with the Royal Air Force because they do use it. We compare your scores to those gained by a peer group who previously took the test and historical trends to give you a percentile score. Your percentile score will decide if your application is taken forward. If your score is below the cut off percentile, you'll be asked to select another role. If this is a client, your application will not be considered further, blah, blah. Right now, this person who it's sent to is in recruitment selection down here, a flight attendant, not hammering flight attendants, guys. They're just serving the people above them and they have to because it's like this North Korean tyrannical state in the Air Force at the moment, apparently, and you can't speak out about the boss. That simply passing doesn't guarantee you a training place. It would allow the RF to reject at a later stage if required by giving us that ability to say, well, sorry, but we did say at the start that we will look at everything and make a decision. And despite you passing everything, there are more candidates that have achieved higher scores. I have no problem with adding this in the terms and conditions. And if the scoring matrix created by the Royal Navy is being developed anyway, we could certainly use it on occasion. However, I still hold the view that moving to a merit-based SIFT using scores achieved from assessment for candidates would be problematic for the Royal Air Force with huge implications on how we do things to achieve our targets. Now, just get this straight. If they select based on merit, that's gonna be a problem for the Royal Air Force because they have targets they need to achieve set by the Chief of Air Staff. Probably in effect coming out of Cabinet Office and MOD, but obviously enforced by the Chief. Another very important point is that Kaz is the Chief of Air Staff, Mike Wigson's number one priority for recruitment is BAME and women. So his number one priority for recruitment is to recruit BAME and women. Currently, the first past the post system allows for positive action, although our colleagues in the Royal Navy believe this is an incorrect interpretation of positive action and very high, very likely illegal. It is. I'll prove to you in a minute. Well, it's not difficult. I mean, I'm, I'm not a clever dude. I've got two E's and an N at A-level. I can read, though, and I'll read you in a minute. And it just, it's pretty clear that what you're doing is illegal. A merit-based sifting system, as used by the Royal Navy, would not give us the freedoms we now have to select candidates to aid the achievement of our number one priority. Therefore, BAME candidate that scored 88 cannot move in front of a white male that scored 89 legally, as that would be positive discrimination. No, it just is positive discrimination for many reasons. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. We know that in the air, I think it's airman selection tests alone, BAME candidates score considerably less than white candidates in general. There's another reason for that, guys. Let me talk about that when I finish the paragraph. We would be adding another hurdle to achieving our top priority. And frankly, the chance of meeting our targets this year, in my humble opinion, are already next to zero. The approach we use at the moment, where we merely consider have they passed, gives us more flexibility to selection candidates to select candidates from underrepresented groups over candidates from overrepresented groups. They want black people in there. They want girls. Now, black people, collective term. Now, the thing about the BAM, the BAM candidates scoring less than whites in general, the selection teams were told to go into like fast food places, Nando's and Pizza Hut and stuff and, and sit down and go and find these, these uh, minorities and these women and say, hey, career in the Air Force, it's fun. You can come in because you've got the right skin color and you've got the right sex as well. So young black girl, you're my favorite right now. Now, what it's doing, the problem is these people didn't think about a career before. They hadn't really prepped for it at all. So when they get in to do these selection tests, they're like, yeah, all right, just I want to be in the Air Force, please, and have a career. They haven't done it. Whereas you do get like a young white guy, like the ones I mentor, maybe some of them are 14, 15 year old going airplane, I want to fly that, or I want to work on that or engineer that or be air traffic. They've thought about it from a very early age. They've gone through air training course stuff, you know, maybe 
uh, cadets at university or a university officer training called us they've thought about it for a long time they've done a lot of research they've done aptitude tests and everything so of course someone that hasn't thought about it before is going to do worse it's nothing it's not eugenics or anything like that my suggestion would be to have this running in the background release a statement below and ensure that the recruitment force articulate that candidate scores will be sifted etc but for at least 50 percent of the trades will struggle to fill anyway so it won't apply that's because group captain Dole, who was head of recruitment selection back in late 2020 uh, just took all of them that were in the recruitment pool and dumped them in the Air Force just to make the recruitment targets. And that's why he got an OBE, apparently, allegedly, my lawyer says. I have to put that in. Well, I understand that getting the best recruits makes sense. <laughs> I'll test. <laughs> oh, God forbid you might have pilots flying over you or people fixing your airplane that weren't the best. I'll test and ensure we have at least recruits at or above the required standard and we can fill up the training pipeline as and when we can with candidates that achieve the number one priority for CAS, which is BAME or women, of course. Probably need to chat this through. For me, there's some middle ground where we have the capability to use scores, but it doesn't tie us down. It allows us to continue to push to achieve our targets. These are diversity targets, guys. We need to be able to continue positive action and dynamically freeloading into training and achieving our targets. So that's shocking. And what they do is they say, okay, so the cutoff is 80. Everyone that gets above 80 gets put in a box that says pass. And that's all it is, really. You get put in a box that says pass. And therefore, we can reach into the box because everyone's now the same. That's important for positive action. And then we can take all the black candidates and all the minority ethnic candidates and we can, all the women, and we can put them in. In fact, I did hear from someone actually that for a period of time, pilot training was shut to men, only open to women. Oh, what is going on? Right, so let's go through some more stuff that I've got here, guys. Okay, this thing is quite important. So the thing is, it's called, the, 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 the thing they use is called RITS, which is Recruitment Information Technology System. And that replaced the Capita system, which was the FEMP recruitment system. Uh, it was developed actually by the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force, and the Navy incorporated a commercial best practice for the allocation of successful candidates that were going to come into the, the training pipeline. That was called blind allocation. Blind allocation worked by separating the assessment and allocation into sort of two different functions, basically. And, and if the candidate has successfully passed all the necessary assessments, which was the airman selection test, which is now called the defense aptitude assessment, I believe. Any other test then, the scores for each element were placed on the table and overall weighted score created. All the candidate data relating to protected characteristics, immutable characteristics, so their uh, age, their, their sex, their race, all that kind of stuff, all right? That's removed. The Navy removes that. It doesn't see it, can't see it. Then only thing that counts is your individual performance against the present cohort of people coming through with you at the time. And you get a unique reference number that left to identify that candidate. The allocation team then league table all the sort of candidates there, basically, and they award the places to the highest scoring individuals. That's what the Navy does. Now, the capability when it was released, when RITS was released, it was offered to the Royal Air Force during the development stage, apparently, but it was just switched off to give the Air Force the opportunity to not use it. The Royal, the Royal Navy use it for all the careers, everyone that comes in. So the Royal Navy only get the best, hence why they're the senior service, for example. Because uh, it removes any unconscious biases. And we all have some little biases, I guess, unconscious ones we're not aware of. So it removes all those and it creates um, a meritocratic selection process. It's transparent. It's accountable. The Royal Navy has these decisions that are made based on a candidate's performance. It, nothing else, guys. The Royal Air Force made a decision not to install that capability of blind allocation within the version of their IT system. Instead, they wish to maintain the approach of being able to select candidates based on their ethnicity and their gender first. It's weird to me. Right, it's weird to me. There's more. Okay, there's more. And we're going to go through this a little bit. So the, re the recruitment officers, they sort of knew they were in breach of this. And they knew they were cherry-picking candidates based on... They had a box of everyone that passed, and they could reach in and go, where, where are the black ones and where are the girls? Black girls, in you go, in you go, in you go. White men, no, 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 no. And there was a period back end of mid... Well, mid-2020 through to late 2021, where these white guys that I was educating and i was you know guys were getting in if they came through my flight school they were getting into the service and they stopped getting in like they just weren't even getting a lot of them weren't getting interviews or they were they were getting they were passing all this stuff and then they weren't getting a, a place at cranwell one of my young boys he um one of my guys he got uh three cranwell entry places like three start dates and then a week before they were cancelled and he got given another date week before cancelled another date week before cancelled and he aged out then he got too old i think you got over 23 and you've got to i think be entering by 23 to be entered by 24. recruitment and selection would score each candidate and you know like like for the computer-based aptitude test they just get a score don't they basically but then when they got that score it was converted to a pass so you know what i mean you've got these people like some people have 86 some people have 90 some people whatever but now they're all in a box called pass yeah <laughs> it's quite <laughs> so what it can do now because they will pass they've all got the same score and because everyone is 
to equal, you can now use positive action to pick them. So we're going to look at that because it's bollocks. Also, waivers is another one that's quite interesting. So the Air Force loves using waivers for specific groups of people. So for educational qualifications, for fitness tests, medical security clearances, aptitude testing, that kind of stuff, it can use waivers. This is the same as they do in America, isn't it? Where Harvard or whatever allows minority ethnic applicants lower sort of scores to enter. And of course it doesn't do any good, does it? Because then they fail. Whereas if they'd gone to a uh, university that didn't have such a demanding entry, they may have actually stayed and got a qualification. So this is just the left hurting people now at this point, isn't it? So if we look over the last four years, though, we'll probably see a lot of waivers under, into underrepresented groups to get them into the service. How do those waivers not impact operational effectiveness well, of course they are going to, aren't they? Okay, Quality Act 2010, what do I need to know? A quick start guide to using positive action in recruitment and promotion. I mean, not be funny, I'm not the cleverest dude in the world, but I can read, all right, I can read. These are the um, things that are affected here. These are the mutable characteristics, protected characteristics, age, disability, gender reassignment, not gender, it's not protected. Marriage, civil partnership, pregnancy, race, religion, sex, sexual orientation. Fine, fine. Now, one of the things that's very interesting about this, and I'm just gonna bring this up where it actually tries to use something against this, you can work out what positive discrimination and positive action is. Positive action is legal. It's where you look at two candidates who've applied for one job. It's like, as I said before, if I've got 10 people in my workforce and we're all dudes, then I've got another dude applying and I've got a woman applying and they're exactly the same. I might say, you know what, I'm going to choose the woman because I want to balance the stuff up. I wouldn't because I'm not a bell end. But people would. I'll just take the best person, of course. That might be the woman. That might be the man. It's got lots of examples in here about how to do it. So you can't make mistakes. It's it just it even says, you know, if you've got this and you've got that, you can read this and you can realize what the Air Force is doing is, is illegal. Now, routinely favoring people with protected characteristics. So routinely favoring people with immutable characteristics such as sex or race. OK, the new positive action provisions make it clear, clear. Well, to me and to you guys who are in the comments with this and to anyone with half a brain cell that employers must not adopt policies or practices designed to routinely favor candidates with a certain protected characteristic, even where there is evidence of underrepresentation or disadvantage. All suitably qualified candidates must be considered on their individual merits for the post in question. Where one candidate is clearly superior or better qualified for the job than others, then an employer should offer the position to that candidate. I, if you've got a higher score than the other person, you're going to get the job. If you're obeying the law, that is. If you're obeying the law, that should happen. However, this does not prevent an employer having a routine policy of being prepared to use positive action where it's appropriate to do so. So for example, I'm on a recruitment team and we say, oh, if we get this thing where we have two candidates again, guys, um, we'll just look at what the representation within our company is again. And we're going to have, if they're equal, then we'll use this policy. We'll go to this um, flow chart here that we've got prepped and we'll just use this policy and we'll just make sure we take the one that is underrepresented within the workforce. Happy, happy Tim. Yeah, no worries, mate. That's sensible, isn't it? Yeah, because you're clever. You're not like these bunch of bellends making these decisions. Also creating artificially low thresholds, which I think we can understand what that is. That's basically just saying, if all my BAME and women candidates, especially the ones I've gone into Nando's to get, you know, that were sitting there having their chicken, whatever, and, and you went, mate, you know, you've got a skin color I need. So you can't say, you know, all our, all our BAME can or ethnic minority candidates are coming in at like the, we got our pass mark of like 80, and we got those white people, especially the men, and they're up there around about the 90s. But all our ethnic minority candidates are in the 75s, maybe the low 80s. Can we just drop this down? Instead of passing at 80, can we drop that down to 70? Because it, it, and if it does, then what we can do is we can put that they're in the box called pass, the pass box. And now I can reach in, I can employ all the you, you are you are damaging. Think about if we did that with heart surgeons. Would you say that the ability of people to do surgery and hearts? had be lowered. Yes, you would, because we're not idiots, right? Because we're commenting down here and we're having an intellectual discussion. How is that different to recruiting people who are going to fix airplanes, going to be flying jets, going to do air traffic, going to be in the Royal Air Force Regiment, going to all these other trade logistics, everything else? How is that not the same? Because it is the same. You are reducing the operational effectiveness of Her Majesty's, His Majesty's Royal Air Force, God save the King. Uh, you are lowering the effectiveness of his Majesty's Royal Air Force by doing this. And that's what Mike said he wasn't doing. And that's why I'm saying Mike is lying Tim Davies, Fast Shit Performance.